What's up guys? Welcome to Rio News. My name is Ignacio Cervantes. And I'm Ramon Alvarado. La Casa de San Gabriel celebrated its 72nd anniversary to raise money for a nonprofit foundation October 11th at the Hilton Hotel. La Casa de San Gabriel celebrated its 72nd anniversary October 11th at the Hilton Hotel in the city of San Gabriel. The charity event featured a gala dinner, award show, and music. The main goal of the event was to raise money for the nonprofit. Executive Director of La Casa, Lisa Correa, picked off the night by talking about the importance of the community center and why she donates time to it. So many that it takes me back to the reason why I'm working at La Casa, and that's to try to help the community that I live in as much as I can. La Casa successfully brought in $7,200 on the evening, but Fabian Valdez, former police captain and now La Casa de San Gabriel board member, says the charity event is great, but La Casa needs contributions year-round. Although this is a one-time event, we need donations and resources throughout the year. It's important for us as members of the board to get the message out that La Casa is more than just a preschool. It's a place for families that are in the community, families of uh, challenged resources to come and get money. I meant sorry, come and get uh, help. La Casa board member and attorney Raymond Barrera believes the community center would get the contributions they need if more people were aware of it. So it's essentially marketing La Casa so that everybody knows about it. Uh, it's sort of a hidden jewel, even in San Gabriel, in a small town like San Gabriel. La Casa de San Gabriel offers free services and is always accepting donations and volunteers. You can visit lacasacommunitycenter.org for more information. As mentioned in the video, La Casa will accept donations year-round to contribute. Visit lacasacommunitycenter.org for more information. This just came in about new stylist patches from Patchy Patchenstein. It's a new vendor that is currently on the Rio Hondo campus selling patches that can go anywhere on any clothing to give it a better look. We have Danielle Anzures on the scene speaking with the vendor for more information. My name is Richard. Uh, I work for Patchy Patchenstein as a vendor and we sell patches to all the colleges from San Bernardino to Santa Ana to Los Angeles and uh, we're going to do that for the rest of the year. How did you pick your high the colleges that you go to like Rio Hondo? I guess it's just in within a radius of where I'm at and where my other uh, partners are at. Um, you. So I'm, from, I'm all over. I go east, west, um, so really every college possible that we can go to. Do you have an on-store site? No, we have a website and it tells you the different events that we do. Uh, we also have an Instagram, but you can't buy just yet uh, online. Are all the designs yours or do you get hire people to do them? We curate them, so we buy them and uh, distribute them. Um, how many patches do you sell like on the daily? On a daily, uh, I couldn't give you a number, but from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, it's pretty consistent. Uh, yeah, I couldn't say off the top of my head. All right, what's your position in the business? Um, I'm an employee for the owner, and I help them uh, sell the patches at the colleges. Uh, they're really, I mean, they're my co-workers or bosses, but they're my friends, so we're all... It's like a small business? It's a small business, yeah. She has a couple other businesses, so this is another business of hers, and uh, we just help her uh, expand it. Where can we find you online? Like on your website? Patchypatchenstein.com, uh, it's on the banner, or Instagram, patchypatchenstein. Right. Horror movie icon Michael Myers is back on the big screen this Halloween season as a new installment of the Halloween franchise is out in theaters now. This movie picks up 40 years after the events of the first movie. We go now to reporter Mason Tyler with his review on this thrilling film. It is considered the highest rated one in the Halloween franchise. An audience couldn't be more proud. 
But is it really worth the wait? And if so, will it meet the audience expectations? This reporter went up to this movie theater, the Whittier Village Cinema, in order to confirm it. Michael Myers is at it again. But this time, it is a retelling that takes place 40 years after the first one. Now, from what this reporter saw, it is a reimagining of, of, of the tale in which Lori had suffered post-traumatic stress disorder from her encounter with Michael and has lived estranged from his daughter and granddaughter for 40 years since that incident. Now, and she only waits for Michael re to return again to finish him off. Now, I admit this is a little... It is not better than the last one, but it is a stellar cast, great plot, and plus, let's not forget the triumphant return of Jamie Lee Curtis. Now, while uh, this Halloween movie is not as good as the first one, it still has its moments. And it is worth uh, the, the wait, in this reporter's opinion. For El Paisano News, I'm Mason Tyler. Halloween is out in theaters now. The Esports 2018 League of Legends World Championships is nearly at its end and it takes place in Seoul, Korea. Starting with 14 teams and now almost down to the best two, here we have Daniel Gomez with the latest update on this tournament. The League of Legends World Championship currently held in South Korea is nearing its final stage. A month-long tournament that started with 24 teams and 14 regions has been narrowed to four teams and three regions. In a historic quarterfinals, three of four tournament favorites were eliminated. On the first day, Korean first seed KT Rolster and Chinese first seed Royal Never Give Up fell to Chinese second seed Invictus Gaming and European third seed G2 Esports. Day two continued to shock as the remaining North American team, Cloud9, defeated Korea's final representative, the Afrika Freaks. After five years of consecutive Korean world champions, all Korean teams were eliminated in the top eight. For the first time in seven years, a North American team made the semifinals. Europe's Fnatic was the only team to meet expectations in defeating China's Edward Gaming to earn the right to face Cloud9. Cloud9's veteran player, Zachary Sneaky Scuderi, had this to say. Yeah, we played pretty well. Um, we were able to come back from deficits. I think games two and three, like we were losing out a bit, but we kept our mental strong and we ended up winning out. It was super amazing. Um, and yeah, it's first time getting semis um, for NA and for us. Like I've been here in quarters uh, yeah, five times now and always fallen a bit short. Last year was the closest one. And yeah, we're finally able to make it. It's pretty insane. I'm really happy. Um, I guess our trait would be proactive uh, aggression. It's, um, I didn't really think it would be too possible um, coming in to Worlds because, you know, we always falter at quarters and all the Korean teams usually look so strong. But this year, it's so up in the air that I'm really confident now that we can win it all. The semifinals will begin on the 27th with G2 Esports facing Invictus Gaming. The following day, Cloud9 will take on Fnatic with the winners meeting in Incheon, South Korea for the Grand Finals. This is Daniel Gomez with Rio Hondo News. The finals for League of Legends will take place this Saturday, November 3rd at 12.30. This month, Netflix premiered a new show of its kind. The curious creation of Christine McDuck McConnell follows Baker Christine as she cooks and decorates her home with spooky creations and creepy crafts. We go to Danielle with her review of this one-of-a-kind series. Welcome to the curious creations of Christine McConnell. The Curious Creations of Christine McConnell premiered on Netflix October 12th, the sixth episode. The show starred Christine McConnell as Christine McConnell and her wacky life alongside her family of a taxidermy raccoon, a cat raised from the dead, and a werewolf. The show's atmosphere could best be described as a mixture of a cooking show alongside skits. The cast is made up of primarily puppets, with a few introductions of people, including Dita Von Tees as a ghost. It's overall very charming in a way, but still manages to be very unique and fun. 
I wouldn't describe this show as a masterpiece of work, but I don't think you're really there for the actual plot of the episodes. It is more about these small skits interlude with McConnell's amazing creations, whether they be clothing or food, more often than not. The set of the show is actually very amazing. It's well done. There's so much character to it. It definitely does have a Tim Burton vibe, but it is still its own unique thing. As for the acting, I do think McConnell is a little bit more dry compared to everybody else, but he is actually a person and they definitely did pace her character off herself, hence her, like, her name is Christy McConnell. Overall, the show is very sweet, it's short, um, a great watch for the Halloween season. I'm Danielle Sue, this reporting for Alpha Song News. We'll be back with the newest trick that shook the art world. Hey man, what are you doing this weekend? Uh, nothing much, what about you? Um, probably nothing. I can't say it right now. I actually have statistics right now, and I can have a test. Do you have a scan from Yes. Yeah. Hey, dude, I really like your hat. Oh, well, thanks, man. I really like yours, too. For an artist that's known for his stunts, this could be Banksy's most perfect art world prank. Wesley Fukuda has the latest on the stunt that stunned art collectors around the world. Two, one. In the spirit of Halloween, we go now to the city of Downey, where Andrea Aguilar is there for their annual Day of the Dead event. We are here in the city of Downey, where they are having the Dia de los Muertos Art Festival. This annual festival features lots of music, art, and shopping. The festival featured Anaheim-based dance group of Grupo Folclorico de Sapio, who all gave a colorful and traditional performance to well-known mariachi songs that entertained the many crowds of families. Local vendors lined up selling their authentic and handmade items by the Downey Theater, which crowds lined up to buy and walked around to enjoy the artist's work. Show cars were decorated in the Dia de los Muertos fashion and lined up by the community stage as part of the occasion. The art exhibit featured local artists whose displayed work showed a variety of artwork that was influenced by modern and traditional Hispanic styles. Avenue Vultures showed the tradition of families and community coming together to honor their past loved ones and beloved artists. The decorated altars all differed from one another by items displayed. Downey resident George Leon and his family gathered together to pay tribute to late members of their family and put together one of the most popular altars of the event. Uh, this is our, our third time here at the festival, so uh, we, we decided uh, not too long ago to do the altar. My mother recently passed away. So we wanted to, uh, to do something in, in her honor, uh, to honor her and to also honor my, my mother-in-law's uh, mother, which is my, my wife's grandmother. This wonderful event was a beautiful way for families to share in the traditions of Villa de los Muertos. This is Andrea Aguiar for El Paisano News. Welcome back, Roadrunners. We had a tight basketball game between the Lakers and Spurs October 22nd. On October 22nd, the Los Angeles Lakers played against the San Antonio Spurs. The game started well for the Lakers as they scored the first three points. However, the Spurs would quickly recover, gaining a 17-point lead at one point before ending the quarter 14 points ahead. It would take two quarters for the Lakers to claw their way back to a tied game of 96-96. The fourth quarter was a slugfest with each team trading the lead continuously until down by three with seven seconds left, LeBron James would sink a long-range three to force overtime. In overtime, the game remained close until the Lakers built a six-point lead with a minute remaining. The Spurs then made a miraculous seven-point rally to win the game 143-142. to LeBron James had this to say after the tough loss. We're just going to we we continue to get better. We're going to continue to get better. Um, you know, I like the direction we're going in. Obviously, it's not resulting in wins right now, but it's such a long process. But um, you know, we had our chances. I mean, it was up six with a minute to go. Well, less than a minute to go, um, you know, and just couldn't couldn't get a stop. And uh, you know, we turned had a turnover in that minute, and uh, Rudy hit a big shot, put him down one. I missed two, you know, free throws, which is um, unacceptable. And um, you know, and then they made a shot, and I missed a shot. It's a process. I get it, um, and we'll be fine. So, despite the rough loss, the Lakers aim to win their first game of the season on the 24th against the Phoenix Suns. This is Daniel Gomez with Rio Hondo News. 
With the Red Sox up 1-0 in the World Series, the Los Angeles Dodgers looked to even the score during Game 2 at Fenway Park. During the second inning, Ian Kinsler popped the ball into right field, allowing Xander Bogarts to run to home plate and put, up Bo put Boston up 1-0. Things slowed down until the fourth inning. With the bases loaded and zero outs, Matt Kemp drove the ball into center field, allowing David Fries to pick it to home, home plate, and tie the game 1-1. Then, with two outs, Yasiel Puig went up to bat and nailed a pitch that zoomed just out of second baseman Ian Kinsler's glove. This allowed Manny Machado to run to home plate and put the Dodgers up 2-1. The turning point of the game came in the fifth inning. Pitcher Hyun Jin Ryu was relieved by Mark Madsen. When Ryu let Boston load up the bases, Madsen wasn't much better. He walked Steve Pierce, which allowed the Red Sox to tie the game 2-2. Then J.D. Martinez of Boston drove the ball to right field, allowing two more runners to score. This put the Red Sox up 4-2 and ultimately iced the game for Boston. Dodgers manager Dave Roberts isn't going to hit the panic button just yet. He defends his decision to swap out Ryu for Madsen. The series now moves to Los Angeles, where the Dodgers will be a lot more comfortable. The Dodgers must pull out a win at home if they want to get back into the series. Game 3 of the World Series will take place at Dodger Stadium. The opening pitch will be at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And now for the weather, we turn to Sam Garcia. Thanks guys. Now today will be a fairly cold day with highs in the 70s and lows in the 60s. Things won't really start to heat up until Halloween, with highs in the 80s and low 50s. Now if you're planning on dressing up, I, I would hold off until sunset, where things start to cool down in the low 70s. Now, for those of you living off the Atlantic coast, Hurricane Oscar is making its way northeast, so expect high tides through Wednesday. It's Sam Garcia with the weather. Thank you for tuning in to Rio News. I'm Ramon Alvarado. And I'm Ignacio Cervantes. We'll see you next time.